Hi, my name is Brooke. I'm a geologist, and that means that I study rocks. But what actually are rocks? They're everywhere, but what do we really know about them, and what can they tell us about the world? This is the High Street of Oxford in the UK, and just across from me is the famous exam school. Uh, you look at the yellow blocks of the front and the grey slates of the roof, that's two different kinds of rocks there. So not only do rocks make the earth that we live on, but we use them for a huge range of things, such as making buildings. I've been obsessed with finding out about rocks and fossils since I was a little kid, and now I'm a geologist, it's actually my job to do that. What I'm going to do in these videos is share with you the simple tools that geologists use to uncover the secrets that are buried in the rocks. You'd be surprised how much information you can actually get out of rocks just by using simple observations made with your own two eyes and without any fancy technical knowledge or equipment. The first secret I'm going to share with you now is that there's only two kinds of rocks, granular and crystalline. Once you've learned to tell apart granular and crystalline rocks, then we can go a little bit deeper and see what else we can uncover. But for now, let's go and have a look at some rocks. And we'll start off right here at St Edmunds Hall, the Oxford College where I teach undergrads geology. Like most of the old buildings in Oxford, Teddy Hall's made out of this beautiful middle Jurassic limestone that was quarried locally. Limestone's a granular rock and this means it's made of grains and granules which are little bits of minerals which might have either grown in place or grown somewhere else and then been transported to where they were finally deposited. The grains in this limestone are mostly made of bits of broken and chewed up shells. And these lines that I'm tracing out with my finger are called cross bedding. It's where the ancient currents were moving these bits of shell about. If you look closely at these flagstones though, you can see that they're made of these shiny little grains. And that's bits of quartz and clay. But on the other hand, these cobbles are large grains in of themselves made entirely out of the mineral chert. So just in this one small area, we've got three very different rocks representing half a billion years worth of Earth history. As you might have guessed, crystalline rocks are those rocks that are made entirely out of crystals. Very different from the granular rocks we've just been looking at. These cobbles are made of something called Markfieldite. This is an igneous crystalline rock. It's formed from a cooled magma chamber. These rocks formed about 800 million years ago in what's now the Midlands of England. Back then it was a volcanic island arc somewhere near the South Pole. Large crystals in a crystalline rock like this Peterhead granite mean that the rock cooled relatively slowly. Same goes for this gabbro which is a piece of ancient ocean crust. And the iridescent crystals in this beautiful lava kite rock record the closing of an ocean that used to exist between Norway and Greenland until about 430 million years ago. Some rocks come from space, and a very famous one was spotted by someone who spent a lot of time in this box on a roof. Back to Earth now, looking at our middle Jurassic limestones. I'm tracing out the old seabed with my finger here, and then again with those cross beds that shows where currents were chewing up the seafloor. We can see that the cross beds are actually stacked up on top of each other, so this is a fairly high energy environment in relatively shallow water. We can even see that the shells are all nicely broken up and scattered along the seafloor too. The floor of the local shopping centre also has an ancient environmental story, though these rocks are Cretaceous and have come all the way from Italy. And again, a lot of the grains here are actually made from the skeletons of ancient organisms, although there's a lot of minerals here that have grown on the sea floor too. I'm back in the Earth Sciences Department now, and I'm here in our storage facility where we keep all of the rocks as we're studying them, and after we study them, so that Whoever else needs them can come back and check up on what we did. What you've probably figured out now yourself from all of those rocks that we've just been looking at in the town is that rocks are pretty much just a record and an archive of a given environment at a given time. It doesn't matter whether that rock's recording the inside of a magma chamber, what's happening at the base of an entire mountain chain, or say a lagoon in a shallow tropical sea. It all amounts to the same thing. So rocks, much like this room, are an archive of past environments and life on Earth. 
or perhaps a better analogy is that if the story of the earth is a book, then rocks are pages of individual paragraphs or sometimes even just a single letter. The job of the geologist is to take those rocks, those letters, words and paragraphs and make sense of them and then translate the story of the earth into something that we can understand as humans. And that's all geology really is, reading the story of the earth as it's written in the rocks. And that's a story that we're intrinsically part of as creatures that live on this planet. In future episodes, we'll start to take a closer look at rocks, figuratively and literally, and I'll teach you ways that you too can be able to start to learn to read the story that's written in the rocks. Do you have any questions about rocks, or have you seen any cool rocks lately? Let me know down below in the comments. I'd really appreciate it if you enjoyed the video, if you give it a like, subscribe, and then share it with your friends on social media. Until next time, see you later and take care.